I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So as you can see, we have two new members with us tonight. So welcome to Amanda Fargiano and Meg Tyler. Thank you. And so this will be our reorganization meeting. And reorganization is conducted in accordance with school committee policy code BDA. So what will happen is I will take nominations for the chair. And then we'll do a roll call vote after we've established our new chair. Then we will have the newly established chair determine the vice chair. So I am taking nominations for Can chair. I ask a question? Sure. Um, about the chair itself, I've, I've read the duties of it, but I was curious if anyone wanted to be chair, do we have to nominate or can we first see if someone wants to be chair? Well, I don't necessarily know that it would be bad to determine if somebody wanted to be, but you must nominate according to the policy. So I, I should not say anything before nominating? I think it might just be best to nominate. I don't know. I mean, I guess that would be up to you. I mean, right. you're at the committee. If you can someone have to, wanted to yeah. turn down or not accept, then you don't have to accept. Yes. Yes? Sure. Because I was going to suggest co-chairs. I do not think that falls within our bylaws. I think we need to have an actual chair and a vice chair. Well, I saw here in the committee policy for school committee officers that the chair of the school committee, blah, 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 he, she, they will perform those duties. So I thought it suggested the possibility for co-chairs. We rewrote this. Yes. Yeah, yes. Please. We yes. rewrote this policy this fall okay. in an effort to be inclusive to folks who don't identify as either he or she. So we chose the pronoun they. Okay. Okay. All right. But it's not a bad idea to, um, you know, from a, from a perspective of the role of the chair, right? When we think of the role of the chair, uh, it's more we are all equal, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, and this is more a facilitation role and some of the business that needs to be conducted to be a nominee from uh, this group of leaders to do and help with some of the moderation in the discussions, the meetings that we have, and a few other duties that come along. And when we look at the vice chair's role, if, if you look at it, it is primarily to step in when the chair is unavailable or what have you, right? So in that case, it seems like they are sharing similar responsibilities. Right, that, that's and and true. you yeah. have you have more of an experience there, Nancy. So um, I I do feel that when we present the words chair and vice chair, um, it kind of does create a sense of hierarchy, if you will, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't hurt. Um, to consider perhaps two co-chairs, if not all co-chairs. Um, that's just a thought I'm throwing out there. And I guess the goal is that the role of the chair is primarily to facilitate and not, it's not about power, but it's more about facilitation. So having a co-chair model may help us um, in terms of not making unilateral decisions, if you will. So when you have two partners, I think it would, it would be better. I also think just to kind of piggyback onto that, it's important to really highlight that the chair and the vice chair certainly are, are partners, but also the chair and the vice chair are e each only have one vote the same as everybody else, but right. that they serve, they serve the committee, not the other way around. Right. That it's an important, I think, distinction to really make is that the, the chair and the vice chair both serve the committee, that the committee does not do for them, but they should be doing for the committee, if that makes sense. And no, I, I think it makes perfect sense. I'm just curious to hear, because I've never been in a situation where a nomination occurred without a discussion of who wanted that role and why they thought they were suitable for that role, because I think everyone here is, is quite Equally competent capable. and able. Yes, and, right. Um, right. So I'll say something, you know, if it's a co-chair model, um, I personally feel that Nancy would be a fantastic person um, 
to be on it i would also want to participate and partner with her if it's okay with all of you and I don't know if there are others who are interested um, in playing that role. Would I it be helpful for me to read the policy? Mm -hmm. sure. Or not helpful? Sh sure. 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 Yeah, I think so. All right. So, um, for the purpose of organizing at its first regular meeting following the district's annual elections, the school committee will elect from its membership a chairperson and a vice chairperson. Both the chairperson and vice chairperson will hold their respective offices for a term of one year or until a successor is elected. The superintendent of schools will call to order the annual organizational meeting and conduct the election of a chairperson. A majority of the members of the school committee will constitute a quorum. The election will proceed as follows. Nominations for the office of chairperson will be made from, from the floor by another member of the school committee without the need to be seconded. The chairperson will be elected by a majority roll call vote of the members present and voting. If no nominee receives a majority vote, the election will be declared null and void and nominations will be reopened. Upon election, the new chairperson will preside, calling the election of a vice chairperson. The procedure used for their election will be the same as that for electing the chairperson. I mean, I only read that just so that you have a sense of very accurately sure. what our policy says. Sure. So I think it, it and please jump in where, if I don't want to restate what's you, what you've said, but I, so to kind of combine what the policy is, the policy seems to call for a particular one chair and one, one vice chair being voted separately. I think that the way that the chair and the vice chair work could be in a more collaborative kind of way. That, that is something, I, I think that's probably a s outside of this immediate discussion. Sure. But it's something that I think would be a, a pot positive okay. for, as a model going forward. I just don't, I think we have to separate it out, the votes. I think we do too from a um, yeah. logistic standpoint. I think that when, um, in a meeting, for example, to set the agenda, things like that, if you bring a lot of people into that place, not to say that more ideas aren't, you know, it won't help the process, but I feel like you, you also have to think of in terms of efficiency, right? So we need to have an agenda in place. Anyone can certainly bring anything up on the agenda, but just to have a meeting to establish that, it's, it's, it's a simple process with two people. Here's what we have, let's put it together. Here's who we need to pull in. Um, so I do think, I feel I'm, I'm looking actually on the um, MASC website to see if there's anything specific about what you're we're talking about here, but it does seem to indicate an individual, so I can't find anything to contradict that. But it may be that there is. I just you know 30 right. seconds of insight. But anyway, okay. so yeah, you, you're right about that, uh, Jen. In that you know having that one person helps facilitate the conversation better. Mm -hmm. And I guess all, the reason why I thought that the co-chair mo model would work is it balances the work as well as the responsibilities. Not that we are not collaborative. I, I think we are a fantastic group of people here, leaders. Um, in fact, I was thinking about it that collectively we have only four years on the school board, mm -hmm. but um, from a life experience and work experience perspective, we have decades and decades of experience that we bring to the table here. Um, so I have no doubt in terms of the collaboration um, and, you know, that that's what I think that it can all be turns and it doesn't stop anyone else from stepping up um, as needed. And it, it seems to me if the policy is written as we've read it, we can't change it in this moment anyway. Correct. Correct. So Correct. perhaps that's for a future discussion if we agree to have that discussion. Um, but I... I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm interested in who wants this role and why they want it. Well, I would like to nominate Nancy as chair because I do feel like, as Mina said, there's very limit. Our experiences in this room are, you know, limited to one year and going on the third year. So I feel like in that first year, there's an enormous amount to learn in terms of um, laws that many of us didn't even know existed until we got here, um, and, and procedures that need to be followed in order to make sure we operate in accordance with those laws. Mm -hmm. I feel like with two years under your belt, you have a much more solid grasp of it than the rest of us. I feel like, you know, in the, this year we've learned quite a bit, but I still feel more comfortable with someone who's got a longer tenure. And so if you're willing, I would definitely nominate Nancy. Thank you. 
And I feel, you know, more than tenor, I have seen um, Nancy show a thoughtfulness that she brings to mm -hmm. the table and a balance and the willingness to listen. Um, and we have seen her speak for a lot of uh, uh, people who don't have voices. So that's, that's absolutely appreciated. Mm -hmm. So there's no doubt about it. But I, I think in terms of willingness, uh, hopefully Nancy is willing too. <laughs> I, I would be honored to, um, to serve in that capacity. All right, so we have a nomination for Nancy Cavanaugh. Are there any other nominations for chair? <laughs> All right, then by roll call vote, um, Amanda Fargiano? Yes. Would you vote for Nancy for chair? I do. Yes. Nancy? Yes. Matt? Aye. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Jen? And Mina. Yes. All right. So we have a new chair, Nancy Cavanaugh, for the 2018-2019 school year. Uh, when we come out of executive session, we can just reorganize our, our seating. But at this point, I will hand over the determination of a vice chair to you, Nancy. Thank you. So at this time, I will seek a nomination for the position of vice chair. For I don't mean to not put my back to you. That's fine. Um, for vice chair for this coming year. I would I'm like to nominate Mina. And so would I. <laughs> Anybody have anything they want to add? Okay. I'm good. Uh, well, yes, I should have made sure you were good with that. Um, <laughs> sure. Then by roll call, we will vote on that. So, Amanda? Yes. Ami, yes. 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 Excellent. So we have settled that. So we have need of an executive session. So we will break into the back room for executive session and hopefully return back here around 7.
Next time I'll bring my so that continues on. So welcome back. We are just coming out of executive session where we met to comply with under the authority of MGL specific to conducting strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-unit personnel, the administrative team, because having the discussion in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position and we are now reconvening an open session. We already had the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, and I'm just going to go through the agenda quickly for people that have not seen it. Uh, we will then move into recognitions. We will have then our first opportunity for public comment, and then we will go through reports to the school committee, including the student council, if we have students here, the art program recognitions and update, the music program update, our liaison roles and reports, the acting superintendent's report, the school committee report, and then we will have new business, including the school physician's contract, school committee meeting dates, and the tech voting member participant. The ESB C member, excuse me, the ESBC voting member participant, senior class gifts, and a request to expend year-end balances. We will then go into old business. We don't actually have any items by, for old business, but we will have a second opportunity for public comment, and then we will do items by consensus, and we will adjourn. So at this time, um, I would like to, do we have any recognitions that anybody wanted to bring forward from the, our time since we last met? We don't have any. Last time we had a bunch of people here, which was sort of fun. Um, we did have a wonderful art show, which I did want to commend, and we have had many uh, musical performances that were very, very talented and well done, so I will recognize those. Uh, There's one recognition that comes to mind is um, the, um, with the senior center, the first graders, um, they have a pen pal program that happens and I happened to volunteer there and the seniors held me back they said you have to stay and meet this teacher and congratulate the teacher uh, for the for the fantastic job that he does and uh, they won't let me go without saying it and I was uh, super excited that I got that opportunity because um, not only was it great to see all the kids meet all these seniors but also their names that they had the pen pals one was called cat girl <laughs> and and someone was named sunshine and um, so fantastic uh, program which is much appreciated in the community so a shout out to the teacher and hopefully that program will continue that's great anybody else have any recognitions okay so hearing none we will move into our first opportunity for public comment so if there are members from the public who would like to come forward to speak you can come up and we have a seat right up here um, where you can speak anybody? it's nice to see so many people here um, no pressure to speak though so Seeing none, we will now move into reports. Um, do we have anybody from the student council here tonight? I don't think I, I know they're they're busy. Some of them have graduated and whatnot. So we'll move into Colleen. Would you like to come up? Do you want to introduce? You sure. So I know we said that we didn't really have recognitions, but we have Mrs. Janino, uh, who is going to do some recognitions and then give us her annual report. All right. So thank you for having me here this evening again for the public. My name is Colleen Janino, and I am the subject matter leader for the visual arts in the district. Um, as a whole, it's been a very productive and successful year for our students and department members. So my first order of business is to recognize 27 of our middle school and high school students on achieving success in the 2018 Scholastic Art Awards competition. Um, if you are present, would you please just come up over here when your name is called? You guys can hang out until I'm done. Um, I have to apologize. The eighth graders, most of them are on their trip right now, so they will not be here. All right, so I have Allison Bird, grade 10, honorable mention in ceramics. Abigail Brown, grade 12, silver key photography. Megan Canfield, grade 12, honorable mention design. Marissa Cardi, grade 12, honorable mention ceramics. Tess Greenwood, grade 11, silver key in ceramics. You here? <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on up. <laughs> Tess? No. 
Abby, Abby Brown. Um, Lily Hanks, grade 12, Silver Key Photography. Kyle Cousins, grade 12, Honorable Mention, Digital Art. Kaylee Cohane, grade 11, Honorable Mention, Design. Grace Liu, grade 10, Silver Key, and Drawing and Illustration. Joe Fan Ma, grade 12, Honorable Mention, Design. Emma Meek, Silver Key, grade 11, Drawing and Illustration. Grace Nealon, grade 12, Silver Key, Ceramics. Elise Pereira, grade 12, Honorable Mention, Architecture and Industrial Design. Matthew Roberts, grade 11, Honorable Mention, Mixed Media. Catherine Russell, grade 12, Silver Key, Drawing and Illustration. Sunita Tandon, grade 12, Honorable Mention, Design. Julia Underda, grade 12, Silver Key, Mixed Media. Yi Chen Wang, grade 12, Honorable Mention, Painting. Patrick Webb, grade 11, Honorable Mention Photography. Fatima Zaidi, grade 11, Honorable Mention Design. Kate Bovace, grade 8, Honorable Mention Mixed Media. Griffin Curtin, grade 8, Silver Key Photography. Elena Klebnikova, grade 7. She is our only Gold Key Award this year. Congratulations, Elena, in Mixed Media. Lisa Lewandowski, grade 8, Honorable Mention Photography. Morgan McAuliffe, grade eight, Silver Key Digital Art. Rose O'Loughlin, grade seven, honorable mention, painting. And Cindy Yang, grade eight, honorable mention, drawing and illustration. Thank you all for your hard work and dedication. The Scholastic Art Awards are a huge honor and you should be very proud of yourselves. I know we are very proud of you and your accomplishments and thank you for representing our department. I also just want to rep um, thank the HPTA who sponsored more than 130 um, applicants for this for us. So, thank you. Well done. All right, in addition to these great awards, we've had many other things to celebrate. In the fall, Sterling Worrell, the high school photography teacher, presented with Fred Haas, the high school technology integration specialist at the MassQ conference, in a session titled, Teaching Blended in a Hybrid Environment. Additionally, Sterling, along with high school art teachers, Christine Enos and Chris Kallenberger, took a group of 30 plus students to Purgat Purgatory Chasm in Sutton, this field trip was the second of its kind and will continue to be an annual experience where the students are asked to respond to this unique environment through their art and in a range of media from photography to painting and drawing in, a, in an effort to get students outdoors working in plain air. And I have to say, I went on this field trip the first year and it's a workout just to be, like they, they trek their tripods up there, all their art supplies, it's a great experience. Also this fall, teachers Bonnie Gauss of Elmwood and Kelly Phillips of Hawkins continued the tradition of supporting the HPTA via the Square One Art Fundraiser. I also want to thank the 80 plus parent volunteers who have come into those classrooms throughout the year. Um, and I would also like to recognize Bonnie Gauss of Elmwood who kickstarted the year creating these new and exciting instructional videos for her students that inspired the whole building at Elmwood to think about new and unique ways to reach their student body. This winter, we had some exciting things happen as well. In January, high school art teacher Sterling Worrell received a MassQ classroom grant titled More Than Just VR Consumers, Creating Virtual Reality Art. Soon, Room C203, the photo studio at the high school, will be equipped with new virtual reality art making station. This will give students the ability to create their own unique virtual worlds. And I have to say, I tried it out. It's really awesome. <laughs> Um, in February, Fred Haas, the high school technology integration specialist, worked with the department in developing a promotional video for the high school entitled The Value of Art Classes at Hopkinton High School Through the Lens of Our Students. I encourage the community to view this. It's on our announcements page on the district website for the art department. Um, our students truly spoke from the heart. So if you haven't seen this, um, it, it's just a great video that embodies what we do and why we do what we do here. Also in February, our Hopkins art teacher, Kelly Phillips, presented during the Art of Ed Now 2018 online winter conference in a session called Organization for the Tab Classroom. 
TAB stands for Teaching for Artistic Behavior, and that's the model that Elmwood and Hopkins both um, follow in their art room. We also had a new and exciting honor for three of our students this month. It was the first year we've had any of our students submit work to the Emerging Young Artists Exhibition at UMass Dartmouth. So the EYA 2018 had a record of over 800 submitted artworks by 493 artists, from which the juror, Dean David Clemens, selected only 67 works to be in the show. Representing Hopkinton, we had Jofan Ma, who also won the Dean's Award, Grace Liu, and Sammy Roberts. And in March, despite all of that extra snow, we had an amazing turnout for the Elmwood Steam Night. Thanks to the help of our teachers, Bonnie Gauss and Christine Enos, we were able to pull off two awesome STEAM activities for the second graders and their families. We had art bots and spin art color mixing. Um, I want to thank students Sunita Tandon, Sammy Robert, and Olivia Kershey for volunteering their time. And also the high school start students helped me make the robots. So we had a good time with that. And we're very much looking forward to it again. We also hosted another successful annual honors art exhibition at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. We had 13 juniors and seniors participate in this event, and it was curated and advised by the high school art teacher, Chris Kellenberger. The featured students were Emily Dembinski, Brittany Forsmo, Kyle Cousins, Jofan Ma, Ivy Massaja, Brenna Pettipit, Jane Quay, Sammy Roberts, Sunita Tandon, Julia Underda, Ben Warndahl, Patrick Webb, and Christina Weldon. We've had much going on in our department this spring. In April, the High School Photography Club hosted their annual photo contest. Um, former HHS graduate Alec Venegas, um, who now works in the photo industry in New York, served as the guest juror and selected the winning photographs. The prizes were also sponsored by Hopkinton Poly Arts Organization, and seven Lomography cameras were awarded to the following winners. Best in show, Ben Warndhall, first place color, Brittany Forsmo, second place color, Rachel Kessler, third place color, Andrea Bogan, first place black and white, Abby Brown, second place black and white, Julia Underda, third place black and white photography, Brittany Forsmo. Also in April, junior Celia Potus received word of her acceptance into the 2018 Art Allstate Experience. She'll head off this weekend to UMass Dartmouth um, with other 11th graders from throughout Massachusetts to participate in a weekend-long art-making experience. And I should point out that the PTA also funds this for our students as well, so we're so thankful. Most recently, we held another successful annual night for the arts, and for our newest members here on school committee, this is only the fourth year in a row that artwork has been on view from all of the schools. Traditionally, it was just the high school, and then um, maybe six or seven years ago, we started to integrate the middle school into that, and then four years ago, we started including the whole district. Um, I want to thank drama teacher Valerie Von Rosenving and the students involved in the One Act Play Festival for sharing the evening, and acknowledge and thank high school music teacher Isaac Brody and the high school women's and men's chorus for performing that evening, too. Um, the 13th edition of Hop Art Magazine was released the night of the show, and this year it was juried by David Kim, the co-works program manager at the Rhode Island School of Design. Again, for our new committee members, I'll leave some of these for you. Another item sponsored by our PTA, but it's a catalog that goes along with our art show every year. So it archives. Um, here, I'll pass a stack down. Thank you, so thank you. It creates a yearly archive of high school student work for us. It's been a really great way to preserve and document all of our student work over the years. Um, their previous editions are available online, too, so you can check those out. Three principal awards for high school work were granted the same evenings to Joe Fan Ma for his sneaker drawing, Sarah Weisinger for her perspective drawing, and Grace Schachterly for her mixed media portrait. Again, another thing the PTA helps us with. On May 12th, the annual 4th Con Congressional District High School Competition Award winners were announced at Wheaton College. From Hopkinton, Lily Hanks received first place in photography and Patrick Webb received second place in photography. This past Monday, our first grade artists, with the help of their art teacher, Karen Lucy, had the opportunity to have their work displayed at the annual Center School Art Show and Book Fair in the Center School Gymnasium. 
While this event is the last of its kind that will be held at Center School, we are very much looking forward to the start of the new Marathon School next year. And one example of us looking forward was the collaboration between the high school graphic design classes with Center School Principal Lauren DeBow. So Lauren, I'm going to have you come up right now too. So both the fall and the spring semester students had the opportunity to design an original logo for the new building. And they went through the whole design process from brainstorming, they had a presentation, um, they came up with thumbnail sketches, they came up with computer iterations until they came up with their final design. Um, and this week at the Art Show and Book Fair, the Center School community voted on the winner of this logo contest. Um, and I'd like to share that 11th grader Blake LaBerge's logo was chosen. So Blake, would you come up, please? All right, something for you. So everyone can see this is the logo that was chosen. You got it? Very nice. You can hold it. And since everybody always wants to know what's the logo going to look like on a t-shirt, I whipped up a couple t-shirts for you and Mrs. DeBeau. Oh. <laughs> that is awesome. So Blake, thank you so much. As you move on into your senior year next year, this is a great way to leave your mark behind in Hawkington, and we appreciate it. All right. <laughs> That's great job. Whose handprint is it, Blake? Huh? Whose handprint is it? Um, it's actually a, were they samples of like mm -hmm. actual kids' handprints? Yep. So we designed, um, we helped design some um, banner proposals for the new school, and the center school art teacher Karen Lucy had all the first graders do handprints, and we were able to vectorize them onto the computer, and we were able to create some um, cool banners with them. So the banner that you'll see when you walk in Marathon has handprints from all of the students that are currently in center school art. Um, and so those handprints were shared with my students if they wanted to use them in, in any way in their design or part of inspiration. So that is somebody's handprint, not sure whose. But <laughs> right, and I'm not sure if they knew about that banner. No, they so, didn't. And when people no. were voting, they didn't know about that banner that was in the lobby. Oh, so it just works so out they that it's a wonderful of, connection. Yeah. So when you're at the building and you see it, and it looks almost like a river and a flow, a, a race or whatnot, so those are our current first grade handprints. So that just makes Great. it extra special that their student um, print is in the building and extra special that a student designed the logo that we'll put on our new website and on our letterhead for for the building and it's something that will always be there Blake so it's it's something to be very proud of thank you a lot of tough competition there were some incredible designers <laughs> yeah, here so if anybody there needs were. some work done <laughs> <laughs> right. yes. yes all right you can sit if you'd like <laughs> thank comfortable thank you no, welcome <laughs> Um, I have to say, uh, so I'm the graphic design teacher, and I don't like to toot my own horn, but um, it's rare that I get an opportunity where they can do an actual, real, authentic logo, so this was perfect. Um, I usually give them the assignment where it's more open so they can choose something that um, speaks to what they like, and sometimes that motivates them more. So when you have a real, actual client, it, it makes... The pressure real it makes the circumstance real so it was just it was a nice experience for everybody um, I also want to say we have some other exciting collaborations for the new marathon coming this soon one which includes acclaimed children's book author and illustrator Peter Peter Reynolds so I don't know if you're familiar with the dot um, and Lauren and I actually had the opportunity to meet with him in April at his bookstore in Dedham the Blue Bunny um, and it was fabulous and so Thanks to the support of the PTA again, we are bringing Peter to come to the new Marathon School to kickstart um, sort of this initiative that we're calling Marathon Elementary Makes Their Mark. So we're really excited about it, and it's going to be a great way to kickstart the new school and the new year there. Um, so in closing, I'd just like to recognize all of the members of my department for their hard work and dedication um, in helping our students achieve such great accomplishments, and to thank the district, our administrative team, the school committee, all of these community organizations 
like the HPTA, the HEF, PolyArts, and the HCA. Without all of this support, um, you know, we wouldn't continue to thrive. So thank you again. Thanks for having me tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Colleen. Thank you, Mina. Clearly this is happening under your leadership. <laughs> Thank you. And it's a wonderful video that the students made. Thanks. It's lovely to see them talking about taking imaginative risks yeah. and the payoff for that. Yeah. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, as a department, you win more awards than anyone I've ever seen. And <laughs> I mean, that only comes from the work of the teachers and the exceptional work of the kids. Thank you. It's so amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent work. Thanks. So at this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Craig Kay up to talk about the highlights and uh, recognition of the Hopkinton Music Department. So good evening. Uh, Craig Hay, District Subject Matter Leader for Music. Um, same thing with music department. It's been a, um, a banner year for us. We've had a lot of things happen <clears throat> uh, and a lot of successful things happen to the students and teachers um, throughout the district. Um, as a department, we're continuing to grow in a positive direction. This year, has, we've worked really hard to develop our new curriculum maps and begin writing units. Um, it's an ongoing process, but we've really established now a real firm foundation of what we're going to from which we're going to grow on. Um, we've also done this while preparing for 36 different performances during the year and additional performances at Mechanics Hall, Symphony Hall, and on Saturday, the Marathon School Grand Opening. <laughs> so just a few highlights from the year, um, and I'll go through the buildings. Uh, at Center School, uh, working with Wendy Moran, uh, obviously planning for having her own classroom has been the main focus. She's been on a cart for many years, uh, so restructuring her curriculum and getting a chance and an opportunity to be in a room to, to, to teach and not have to like move around chairs or anything like that is has been her big thing this year. So we've been working on that to get ready for that. At Elmwood uh, with Christopher Sweeney, uh, along with the Meeting of the Eagle performances and his the Kenya Day performance that we always do. Um, Chris is starting to put his own mark on uh, the curriculum there. As a Berkeley grad, he has started a jazz unit with third graders with the goal of teaching them some basic improv skills so that um, the plan is next year when we have our jazz night to introduce some of our third grade jazz musicians. Wow, that's <laughs> great. At um, Hopkins with Jessica Barkin, Patricia Diamond, and Caitlin McDonald. Um, we were very lucky to have Mrs. Diamond come back out of retirement this year to work with our fifth grade orchestra. Um, we had wonderful numbers again. We had 91 students in the chorus, 71 in the orchestra, and 134 in the band. And um, one of the highlights of the year was Mrs. Diamond did take some of the students to the respite center to play. That was one of her old calling cards, and she was really happy to bring that uh, back. Uh, with the middle school, with uh, Dave Purdy, Jeremy Dodge, Lisa Nielsen, uh, Kat O'Toole, and, and Caitlin, uh, we had a number of performances this year. Eighth grade band obviously plays with the high school pep band at homecoming. Uh, eighth grade orchestra combined with the fifth grade orchestra to play at the Veterans Day ceremony. Uh, our standard concert series. Our seventh grade band will be performing at the eighth grade promotion ceremony. So. We're not done yet. Um, our honors chorus sang for the desire to inspire wreath laying ceremony at the State House before the marathon. Um, our additional after school ensembles, the Hop Capella, the honors chorus, and the jazz ensemble have seen greater numbers than we've had in the past. Um, so it's nice to see those additional ensembles growing. Uh, our new drama teacher, Allison. Uh, Porter, along with Margarita Porzio and, and Miss Nielsen, um, put on the production of Annie this past spring. So it was very interesting to put a person who brand new to the, the district to 
put on a, a, a big performance. Um, the other thing that we did with the, the middle school staff was that we were invited to um, present at the Massachusetts Music Educators All-State Conference in Boston um, on a, uh, excuse me, let me just get caught back up. We did a presentation called A Unified Approach to Instrumental Music. Uh, we were asked to present this by Dr. Timothy Anderson from UMass Amherst who would come out to visit and see what's going on in the schools and really liked our sort of team helping each other approach to music education that we offer. Uh, we did that on March 2nd in Boston when it was flooding in the seaport. <laughs> Um, but we had well over 100 people attend our, our session and I'm still receiving emails from other music educators about coming in and seeing what we do and how we do it. Um, this year for the middle school at MICA, the 8th grade orchestra, band and chorus all received silver medals, excellent ratings. And we had a number of students make junior district. Jacob Chastain, Kira Sword, Evan Mirazimi, Grace Young, Sam Lagoy, Allison Chen, Cameron Franks, Anwen Hong, Carolyn Osman, and Kevin Wang all represented the Hopkinton Middle School at the District Festival this year. At the high school uh, with Isaac Brody and Jeremy Dodge with the Jazz Ensembles. Um, our big thing this year was that we established our AP Music Theory class. We had five students um, in the class and you know were prepared for the the exam that was given, I think, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, all the students, at the, at least right now, felt that they did very well. We'll find out. Um, I think they did really well. Uh, we really worked hard to establish a new curriculum for that uh, and get the materials needed so that the students would succeed. Um, we've had um, a number of obviously performances this year from football to the student run hoop band to our concert series to MICA um, to performing at um, Mechanics Hall for the chorus and the Symphony Hall for the concert band. Um, our jazz ensemble this year did something that it has never done and that is they earned a gold medal at the District Massachusetts Association of Jazz Educators Festival which earned them the invite to the state festival where they earned a silver medal. Uh, so that was new for us. Um, we had a number of musicians come in to work with our groups. We hosted uh, Paul Alberta, Ken Hadley, and Bob Cook as jazz music clinicians for the jazz ensemble and jazz lab. They spent an afternoon with us. Um, they spent about six hours with us to help all the groups and all the students prepare. I had my former uh, college band director, Malcolm Rowell, who is Professor Emeritus at UMass Amherst, come in and work with both the concert and symphonic mm -hmm. bands. He's also related to Chris Rowell, who just graduated this past year. We have three students uh, heading off to major in performing arts. Uh, Rachel Chen will be attending UMass Amherst for flute performance. Lucy Medeiros is te um, going to New York University for theater education, and Galen Graham is going to UNH for theater performance and education. Um, we have a number of alumni who have started to do very well for themselves after, through their, after having gone through the Hopkinton Music Program. Stephen Oslander, who graduated last year, is going to be signing his first recording contract. Uh, as a freshman at University of Miami. Uh, Bella Comadromos, who just graduated last year, is already performing and singing in and around Boston. She's at Berkeley. Um, we have a number of students who have put out new albums with their particular groups in different parts of the country. Sean St. Germain down in Austin, Texas. Maggie Grabmeyer out in California. Joe Grabmeyer out in California. Uh, we have front page. Uh, Laura Brisson, who is a freelance French horn player, um, is also just put out an album with her woodwind quintet called District 5. And I'm hoping to get a copy of that to share with everybody. Uh, another one of the things that was really good that happened at the high school this year was Andrew Keeley has established his instrument donation program. Um, 
we have a number of instruments that are now filling up my office um, that we'll be able to disperse throughout the um, uh, school district. Uh, the biggest thing that has come in so far were some of the bell kits. So what we're hoping to do next year with beginning fifth grade percussionists is that they will not have to bring them on the bus. <laughs> We will have enough down there for them. So many yeah. bus drivers. <laughs> yep. For sure. So um, we'll have enough for that. Um, at the MICA Festival this year, the high school concert band received a gold, the high school orchestra a silver medal, the high school chorus a gold, and the high school symphonic band a silver. Uh, our small ensembles at the Solo and Small Ensemble Festival for MICA, Noteworthy, received a gold, and Men's Chorus received a silver. Uh, once again, we've had greater numbers of students auditioning for district in all state. So this year, our senior district uh, recipients were Rachel Chen, Matt Dempsey, Andrew Keeley, Abby Kelly Lanzer, Dan Moreno, Adwait Nene, Andrea Liu, David Antaki, Jesse Franks, Yue Dong, and Anchi Hong, Andrew Polico, Kyle Stuckel, and Marabella Pellucci. The following students made Allstate, Rachel Chen, Matt Dempsey, Andrew Keeley, Abby Kelly Lanzer, Dan Moreno, and Adwait Nene. Uh, earlier this year, we recognized both Rachel Chen and Dan Moreno as being selected as alternates for the national concert band. Rachel was selected and represented Hopkinton this past November. On top of that, Matt Dempsey, Dempsey Abby Kelly Lanzer, and Andrew Keeley were selected to audition for next year's National Concert Band and Chorus. So our students are receiving national recognition for their talents. I want to take the time to thank the Hopkinton Music Association, uh, Clorinda Kershey, uh, Creo Kershey, president, for their continued support with all our concert outfits, um, preparing the concert booklet, and fundraising for scholarships. Uh, this year, our senior scholarships were awarded to uh, Evan Palmer, who received the Stephen Yavaro Scholarship, Galen Graham, who received the Joseph Markarian Scholarship, and Rachel Chen and Lucy Medeiros each received uh, a Hopkinton Music Association Scholarship. Um, and once again, to continue thanking the Music Association, their membership, their volunteers are present at every performance. They help with pops, they help with Hopkins concert, they help with everything. This year, uh, we had a runner uh, for our, our, the marathon. Uh, her name was Alex Mims, and she did run the whole marathon in the rain um, and raised over $5,000 to go to the students. We've also received some very generous donations in town to help us with some of the needs that we have. Um, with the, One of the biggest things that we're going to try to do is get our our two really nice grand pianos fixed up and great. in great working order versus just functional. <laughs> um, I also want to thank the HPTA. They helped sponsor the Jazz Ensemble uh, for their recording for the Charles Mingus Festival. And um, I also want to just thank the HPTA, the HMA, and the Lou family. Um, they donated some hand drums that we used so the concert band could perform the piece at MICA this year. Uh, these drums, uh, now that we're done with them, we are going to donate them to the Marathon School so that Wendy Moran will have a few more drums in her room <laughs> next fall. I want to th also thank uh, publicly the David French Music Company uh, for continuing to find ways to provide uh, all music students the best equipment possible. Uh, the dedication of Eric French and his staff to make the students and parents of Hopkinton never have to worry about instruments is just an incredible asset. Um, we're also working on right now to find a smaller trombone case so trombone players can actually bring their instruments on the bus as well. Um, we do have some needs coming up in the near future that we are looking at. Um, one of them, which will be kind of big, is that the wireless microphone system, um, the frequencies uh, that we use here in Hopkinton have been sold to cell phone use. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we would like to do is just take a multi-organizational approach to, to work with the administration, the school committee, Music Association, HPTA, and anyone else in the community who does use the wireless system um, to help 
pay for this new this kind of big expense um, but we'd like to be able to get both auditoriums outfitted and outfitted for uh, a, a long period of time so we don't have to worry about this again uh, so that's something that we'll be reaching out and doing next year um, second the auditoriums we need to have them checked for electrical uh, just because we have lights that blow all the time even if we put LEDs in there so we've been working with Tim Presson and Ashok Ghosh to uh, see what we can do to make sure that our auditoriums are updated and those are those are our physical plant needs um, and then finally, uh, one of the things this year is that we did have to do some reorganization in the music department due to some budget things. But I do want to take the moment to just um, say that we will be losing Mrs. Diamond uh, at Hopkins. And while she's a retired teacher, I'm going to try to read it. Her presence in the building and in our department has never been greater. Pat is the epitome of an exemplary teacher. She has a way with students that breeds success for all in her class and is our greatest sounding board. She makes the whole department better by being our greatest mentor, so she will be sorely missed. So, in conclusion, um, the music department and myself could not do what we do without the support of the school committee. Dr. Kavanaugh and the whole administration. We are gr very grateful for your continued support of performing and visual arts. Um, without your support, we would not have such a vibrant art and music program. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Fantastic job. Thank you. Say. And again, you know, it's under your leadership uh, that all these programs, and we get to enjoy all of this in the community. And I know we didn't do this, this shout out, I forgot about it, is the whole graduation ceremony and how wonderful that was and what a great and job you and all the kids did there. Thank you. Um, we're very proud of the work that you do. And I don't know Mrs. Diamond personally, but clearly she has had an impact. Um, so our best wishes to her. Thank you. I just want to add two things to piggyback off of Mina. One is a graduation, and I have heard many of across the board your wonderful performances this year but it was nice to see the band playing even without the seniors and still sounding so fantastic it's it, it, I know each musician brings so much to that band it's amazing to hear how they're able to rise up even with that I, I do have to say this is the first year I wasn't nervous about that because <laughs> we graduated 17 seniors but this past year we great gained 42 freshmen so um, to have over 100 students performing at graduation it kind of made me relax a little bit <laughs> it, it's in both in the performing and the visual arts we are so fortunate to have such strong leadership and bring out the best in so many of our students many of whom have found difficulty in other academic areas are able to really find what they shine at in ways that I think pour over into everything they do. So thank you to both of you for that. Uh, also, just really, I know when you first came with Andrew Keeley's whole thing, that is such an amazing opportunity to bring instruments to the, into the school and into the hands of performers who might not otherwise have the opportunity. So thank you to him and to you for supporting all of that. And then finally, uh, I noticed at Pops that there was a table in an area from Golden Pond, and I thought that was really phenomenal. So. Yes, um, Mallory Pischoff was working on, I believe, Silver Star for Girl Scouts. Okay. Uh, and she came to the HMA board with a proposal to, once again, bring the seniors to um, the Pops concert. It was a tradition that we used to do for years, and at some point, whether it was a transportation issue or something, uh, it didn't happen anymore and uh, she brought it to our attention she's like I'd really like to bring them and we're like that would be great and she worked really hard to make sure that that was all organized and did that all on her own so all we had to do was make sure there was a table for them and um, we did have a little bit of an issue that the fact that it was um, bingo night and early dinner so, they really so there were a bunch here. of people who had to like weigh <laughs> whether they're going to pops but I, it's, it was well worth it <laughs> yes and it brings a lot to the school as well. So yeah, thank you. I just want to say two. Sorry, oh, go ahead. Just two quick things. I mean, one um, with the music department. 
Um, you have introduced so many things. Your department, every year there's something new, there's some new event, and it's great for the kids, but you also are at all those events. And so every time we add a competition, add you know a new feature, I know it's a drain on your staff, but it requires a lot more time on your part. It is so appreciated, and the um, music programs are phenomenal. The students benefit greatly. Um, and the other thing I just want to say with both um, the visual arts and the music, I was struck by when you're talking about the visual arts, how it takes a village. There is there were you know high school volunteers and HPTA and parents, and I think with with the arts in general, it's it's about bringing people together and touching people, and I think it just brings so much to the district the work that you guys do. So thank you. Thank you. I just want to, oh, I'm sorry, to, to third that. It, Seamus Heaney says that even though the arts are all made up, they help us get at truths about who we are. And I don't think we'd ever discover those truths were it not for art and music. So I'm eternally grateful to both of you. Thank you. And I guess, Craig, I would just add this, that a couple of years ago, when I first met you, I had asked you about what's your vision for the department, and you had said you would like to bring AP Music Theory, that you were kind of hoping to grow the numbers of students who are participating in band and orchestra and all of those things, and you thought that it would be great to see kids earning more medals and bands earning more, and you have done all three of those things. You should feel very proud of the work you've done the last two years, and the kids, too. So Thank you. Thank you. And please pass along to Mrs. Diamond that she will be sorely missed and that very well appreciated for her years of service and teaching. Thank you. So that brings us to our discussion about liaison, liaison roles and reports. First, I don't know if people have any liaison reports from existing carryover from where we already were since we last met? I have two, and Excellent. they are related and both kind of awesome. So, <laughs> um, like awesomeness. Yeah. So the first is the elementary school building committee um, is having the marathon school open house this Saturday. So um, if anyone happened to miss any of the promotional material after this <sighs> Saturday, one to three, um, we have high school students offering tours of the building. The bands will be performing. I hear rumors there may be ice cream trucks there. Don't hold me to it, but I think there are going to be ice cream trucks there. Um, speakers or folks are going to be um, um, talking about the building and the process. So anyway, one to three this Saturday is the open house. And then um, related is the center school reuse. Um, committee is going to hold a public forum on Wednesday the 13th, so I think that's next Wednesday. Is that true? Yeah, that's next true. Wednesday. Um, at 7 p.m. at HCAM um, Studios to um, kind of talk a little bit about the information that's already been gathered and compiled and the recommendations that seem to be sort of trickling to the top, but also to find out if there's any um, additional public input before official recommendations are made and we find out before we find out how much these recommendations are going to cost so um, so really it's more of an informational meeting and then sort of a, a, a I don't want to say data gathering but information gathering if there's anything else the public wants to suggest in terms of center school reuse and then um, um, from there costs and recommendations are going to take place so both related both good Moving on. That's all good. <laughs> I have one update. Uh, it's primarily on the community communication front. Uh, we had a very good meeting. Uh, I know Dr. Kavanaugh couldn't join. Um, and what we have been doing is with the various organizations in the community, we have been discussing how is the relationship working well with the schools and what are some aspirations for the year to come or maybe years to come. And so we talked a little bit about the town on the town front and uh, uh, Connor Deegan was representing his office, and he talked about how uh, you know the, the voter registration uh, education had happened at the high school, and his interest and desire uh, 
to introduce some civic engagement all the way all the way down to center school and he had talked about uh, one year when they had done voting in Hopkins related to the shape of the dog tag and so we will be bringing those ideas uh, back to Dr. Kavanaugh and see what is feasible in the year to come. So we're focusing on different groups and uh, we also got good feedback from Heather Backman, uh, from, who's the library director, and she talked about how she's so grateful to all the principals who advertised this survey that was done for the library that there's that partnership happening. So uh, that was exciting. Um, and other exciting news uh, on the same committee is the work with uh, Mr. Ghosh and uh, how he has been able or he's pulling together a brochure hopefully coming out um, uh, by August time frame before we go, la uh, go into the new year which uh, speaks to all the schools that we, uh, you know, what are the offerings of the schools and a message from um, the superintendent's office and all the ad other administration. So it's, it would be a brochure to our schools. Um, also some updates that he's working on are related to the website for the Marathon Elementary and the hope is that by end of this month there will be something ready in to share uh, in line with the new school opening. So that's um, that's on the community communication front. There was also the tech school, uh, the tech had their graduation. Unfortunately I could not make it. There was a conflict. Um, but they had their graduation ceremony as well. That's it. Yeah, busy. You've had a busy year with the community communications and yes, the website. Please. Both have yes. made some real inroads. Of. Yes, I'm actually happy that now it's coming to that place. I think initially it was all very early and uh, we didn't know where we are going, but it's like taking good shape now. It's exciting work. So I have one liaison report, which is I met with the Farewell to Center School uh, Committee, which is going to be an event on September 15th. Uh, we are in the process of getting pictures together from people who have been through many years at center school we have people on the committee who are in contact with people who were at center school back in the early 30s we didn't quite get a student from 28 yet but lots of looking and getting con connections with retired teachers as well to bring back so it'll be a good good day with more information to come so the next part about liaison roles that we had to discuss and i'm not sure, looking through the packet now, if this was shared per particularly with Amanda and Meg, the liaison roles. So that's something we should, oh, you do. Oh, beautiful. I was going to say, it's, I don't think everybody wants my um, verbal explanation of it. Thank you. This was, what a this was people younger than me. So we don't have to vote on all of these today, but it, to give a, a good idea, I thought it would be productive to have a conversation on them. Uh, some of them are self-explanatory, like the chair and the vice chair we already discussed, and some of the roles go along with the role of being the chair or the vice chair. I, well, I guess not the vice chair, but in conjunction together, we would work some of that out. So the ones that need more rapid movement on is ESBC is looking for a second uh, member and we I, Jen is already on that committee and that that's something that carries over because it's a project it carries from one year to the next but we do need a second member because Mr. Graziano was also on that and he's no longer on the committee the second member is a non-voting member but would stand and you can explain this better than I can because you're on the committee sure sure so um because we have a voting position on the committee, if there is a reason that um, you know that we'd be able to attend, we need to have someone there so that they can also have a vote. And of course, absolutely, you can come and um, you know participate in the meeting. Um, both of us together can attend. Um, so it's, I mean, it's a fairly. Uh, it doesn't have to be a tremendously labor-intensive 
uh, committee choice if there's something else on here that you know is going to be labor intensive um, this it would be a good choice because I I typically make 99% of the meetings so you wouldn't necessarily have to attend every single one um, and it's, it's it, also too it's kind of in a it's fun phase because the building is almost done you know it's you know everything is sort of in place it's a lot of sure. bill paying and logistical things but um, you know it's, it's things are wrapping up Fun to be a part. Yep. Yep. Fun to be a part. But so, Jim, how long do you think this committee will uh, last? They've suggested that it should be about another year. It may okay. be more than a year, but um, as the, the project comes to a close, mm -hmm. people are going to want to get paid, and there's always punch lists and things like that that have to get taken care of as the building opens and gets used. So they anticipate a year, but it could be longer. Yeah. Is any of the new members interested? I'm, I'm happy to be the second member. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just going to wait and listen to the rest of the needs. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to keep going. So, yes. So, the community communications is the role that Mina has been taken on. And when we voted that last year, we did not discuss whether or not that would be a continuing role. We did it. Right. But I, I would like to hear from you what your yeah, vision my thoughts of, are. Yeah. It is still a little bit early. I think it's a good six months away, if not more, before we, you know, get to a good place. But I'm happy to have another member join in in that conversation. Um, it'll be fun. Okay. So we'll, I will add a second member. Member we, on You know, the way we have it organized is, uh, you know, we, we need we don't have a chair or vice chair or voting right. members at the moment. Yeah. But if we want to do that, we could do that to formalize it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We're welcome to have another member join in. Okay, so then the next one down is minutes review. And we are um, very fortunate that we have uh, Sue McClure, who actually takes our minutes um, from the HCAM um, broadcast. The minutes review person, um, and Mina you know, and yes. I have both had the enjoyment of being the minutes review person. Yes. Uh, it's a fantastic job in a high <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, So, the fine print. Um, yes, Sue so does a fantastic job of taking minutes, and she's very good with turning it around. We do have to review it, and there have been times when I may have been absent, but then I go back and look at the video and make sure it's accurate. We can all always rely on someone else, too. Um, and uh, sometimes it's the timing, etc., that needs to be looked at. But uh, the ones that we do have to take on are the executive session minutes. Um, so whoever is doing that, so Sue is not doing that. Also, any kind of interviews. For instance, last year we had, um, you know, all the interviews that we had of the superintendent finalists and also the assistant superintendent. All of those need, need to be minuted, or it could also be... Um, if we had gone to, for instance, the safety forum, mm -hmm. um, that needs to be minuted. Again, it doesn't have to be super detailed, um, those because those are where we are attending, right? But they still need to be um, done. So someone who's detail-oriented and enjoys um, looking at, you know, overseeing, making sure everything is right, I, I would highly recommend it. Take it on. Please. So. <laughs> yes, it's so fun. The, the Lance here to my left. The, um, <laughs> you're selling it. We can, I'll go through, we can go through them and then come back to some of these. The policy review uh, this past year, Jen and I did together the previous year. I also did it. So I actually feel like I am ready to step down. I, I, I actually really enjoyed it, and I think it's a great way to learn about how our policies came to be, the ones that are in, in existence, and also to look forward to shaping policy before it comes here to the full committee. It goes through the policy review, and we would look at, Jen did a phenomenal job of going through the policies and really looking at which ones needed to be reviewed because they were old or sometimes because there have been legislative changes that require it that has to be changed. But it's, it's a great, I think, opportunity. I enjoyed it even though I, I did it two years. I enjoyed both years very much, but I do feel like I'm shifting with some of the things I'm doing. It would be better to allow somebody else to have that opportunity. Um, but would, I would assume you would want to stay for a second year just... I, 
I would, yeah, I would like to, if and, you know, and if there are other folks that feel strongly, we can certainly discuss it. But I, I echo what Nancy said. When you have the chance to read through all 200 and something documents that are on the, it takes a long time. But after you read them, you know, things really start to sink in. Sure. Um, about you know yeah. a lot of that, like I was talking about before, the laws and things that. Um, you know, many of us sort of aren't even, don't even realize exist and that we need to be very mindful of those things. In, um, like the code of ethics. Business. Yes. So, yes, so that's, that, that is, the, the budget advisory group is a conjunction of the chair, the board of, the, the chair of the board of selectmen and the chair of the school committee and then finance directors from both sides and the superintendents. So that's, and then. So if I yes. may, Nancy, I feel like, um, you know, the budget advisory group, I'm also trying to look at the skill set a little yes. bit, and I don't know what the interest is. I've found, you know, Amanda, uh, watching her being very detail-oriented and very good with looking at numbers and data, I was wondering if she has any interest um, in, you know, helping out in that area, just throwing it out there. I don't know how it works. So I yeah, it, it, it has to be one person because the town attorney, Jean actually had looked into having me do it with her last oh, year. It has to be one person because okay. the way the town defines the quorum of the group is that if there are two selectmen and two school committee, it would constitute and trigger the whole um, need for a different. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. There's a proxy okay. for that. Probably yes. Yes. Maybe we can come back to it. I mean, there's plenty of time to get that. Did you have something to say, Dr. Kavanaugh? No, so just to be clear, we have to have the superintendent, the business manager, the chair of the school committee, and the same sort of parties on the other it end. It has to be. I see. I see. Okay. So the ADA committee, I am waiting to hear back. That's a town committee, and the school committee has a voting member, although it, there's a little bit of difficulty finding out what the status of that is town-wide right now. So before we vote on that, I would want to be able to give people a sense of where that's at. What is the ADA committee? Americans with Disabilities? With disability. Okay. Um, it, it may have been a short-term committee, but it, it because it, it does not seem to have met any time recently. I see. But it may be something that could be re... It, it seems like an important enough topic to pursue and see if sure. it's something that would be... But is it, it was someone looking into it last year? Was someone assigned to it? We did not have somebody assigned to it okay. last year because it seemed to have... We had no details. Okay. We had no details, so okay. we'll see where that's at. Uh, and then this Sustainable Green, Green Committee was the same mm -hmm. issue. Yes. I was assigned to that, but I don't think that it was... I think I maybe received two emails the entire year, and those were taken care of pretty quickly by... Tim, I think, mm -hmm. he addressed whatever question it was. So anyway, it was, yeah, I'm not sure that it's, not sure that it's a thing anymore. So then the Marathon Fund Committee, who, do you, either of you remember who did that last year? I don't have last year's list in front of me. Did Jean do that? We can look it up. We can look at, do you have last year's? accessible. So while you're looking that up, the CPAC is not actually a function of the chair. It, I think that's a carryover from when Lori did it because she was the chair. Uh, I did that last year. I, I did make a commitment that I would be willing to do it for two years, but I also wanted to add the caveat that um, if CPAC desired somebody um, different, I would allow that to, I, I'm not going to I think we still desire okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Just, yes. Okay, then I will keep that. <laughs> I, I think the Marathon Fund Committee was John, based okay. on what I'm seeing here. So, so the ESBC, Youth Commission, Planning Board, Turf Field Committee, and um, the Marathon Fund Committee is under that one block. I know we've changed names. Looks like it was under John. Thank you. Oh, that's brilliant that you pulled it up that way. Tech, where are we discussing that? We're discussing that separately yes. later on in the mm -hmm. agenda. So we, we can talk a little bit yes. about what tech yes. is. So it's the education um, collaborative, and uh, it's for high needs children that uh, it, it's in Walpole, what it entails. And besides providing that, they provide a lot of other services. There are 15 member districts, and uh, they have provided fantastic uh, 
professional development opportunities, uh, networking opportunities, meeting with the legislators. It's open to all members. And uh, I've had the opportunity to be there. The commitment in terms of time is the board meeting happens once a month on a Friday, very early in the morning, about 8, 8.30 in Walpole. Um, so that's the monthly commitment. But beyond that, there are a lot of other events that happen. For instance, I had attended a session on concussions and sports injuries. Um, they have uh, offered, for instance, uh, a legislative breakfast that they had. And we had an opportunity to meet with the Framingham uh, mayor, uh, Yvonne Spicer. So a lot of opportunities like that. And as a member, you would want to make sure that you show up and support. Mm -hmm that work. So that's the commitment in terms of time. It's a fantastic group of people and you feel very humble sitting with all these educators and uh, people who care and give. Yeah. And am I right? They, they used to also have an opportunity to talk with other school committee members, that, which was a really right. valuable oh, yes. to yes. hear how other districts are. Yes. I think it's, a fa it, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, this is one of those things where I feel like, oh, but you know, obviously it's open to everybody. You should. I highly recommend it. So the Youth Commission is a liaison role to the Youth Commission, and the commitment is to go and to be part of their discussion and their what they're doing. It is not it, the school committee liaison does not have a voting position on there, but the school committee has, I think, had a pretty. You used to be on the Youth Commission, so you could maybe speak to the voice that the school committee has had. But I felt like when I did it as a school committee member, I was listened to equally and valued for what I brought, but that's also a, a fun one to get to know a different group. The planning board uh, is not necessarily, you don't have to go to every single meeting, but it helps to look through the agenda, which is posted on the town website to see when things are coming up that would impact the schools, and to also have a relationship with the planning board to be able to get a heads up when there's some bigger projects coming down the road that are going to impact us with enrollment and other things that, of that matter. The, the Irvine Todaro Committee is, I have done, um, which is, it meets maybe twice a year. And it is the property where the Marathon School is being built. It's is the Irvine and Todaro properties over there. It's actually two properties. And, figuring out the uses for the rest of the property. Mm -hmm. There had been some, it, it was originally voted when we bought the other, the town bought it because it seemed like an opportunity where in the future maybe we would need to put a school there or something that would be advantageous, but it's not the only use that has been looked at for that property. So, And then the turf field committee I was voted on to at the last, was it the last meeting? Yeah, that's right. And then the school committee website, and we are looking for two for that. Is so, that, so we are that, calling that out separately. Is that what we're I hoping? Know, I see it for the for, for the, the school, school committee, committee website. website. Oh, and is it in? is it just the menu or is it? No, I think when Ashok had asked you about what you would like the school committee page to look like, there could certainly be two people who start okay, working so on it's that. Okay, so simply that would be on, wonderful. on that. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, and you had sent us some sample. That's right. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is one other one that um, I want to bring up is yes. the Metro West Consortium. I think um, this came from Representative Dykema's office where we had one, um, uh, you know, an opportunity to speak directly to the legislators and share what is on top of our list. Um, and it was a fantastic uh, right. meeting, and after that, there was a follow-up where she was able to bring representative Beach, and everybody got an opportunity to speak. So there is an initiative that is being driven by the Northboro, Southboro School Committee member Kathleen uh, Palaccio. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Um, but her hope is that we can meet every so often as school committee members and uh, collectively speak to what are the issues that we want addressed um, and bring it to the attention of our legislators. And this is coming straight from Representative Dykema's office. So I think, again, it's a great opportunity great. to meet others and also highlight what is it that we want our legislators to know and bring it to their attention. That's so that's another one uh, which is coming up. It's to start. Yes. That's great. So is there, other than the... 
trying to think. We did the, the ESBC. Or we, uh, we just need a second voting number for that, or a second, an alternative voting number, sorry. Thank you, Meg. Yeah, for Meg, had, Meg had expressed interest in that. Okay, okay. Are there other things? We don't have to decide all these, so if you guys want time to, to think and consider about different things, some of them we can hold off on some until the next meeting, but are there others that people feel particularly compelled towards that you're interested in? I have a lot of interest in the policy. Okay. Work. I mean, I don't know, you know if anyone else does, but that certainly is an area that um, is of interest. And I mean, I would do anything, but... Um, you should be careful when you say you would I should, anything. except you, some of the ones that were really sold hard over there. Oh, this is really fun taking minutes, huh? <laughs> yes, Amanda, you would be fantastic. I really believe that. Oh, thank you. Uh, so policy is a particular interest. Uh, I would certainly join you as a tech, an alternate to, for the tech collaborative, if um, that is of interest, or the consortium. Um, really, anything. Um, I would happily do youth commission. Okay. And the tech, if you need to tech people. And the Irvine Todoro Committee. I'm just trying to avoid the minutes review, so I'll that, keep talking. Okay, so I was promised. Yeah. I was promised that this uh, this ends in a year. It, it gets passed on to the newbies. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the ADA Committee <laughs> is of interest to me too. Everything but the minutes. What did you say? I didn't hear. <laughs> the ADA committee? I will take the minutes from you, Nina. Oh, I will my God. Wow. You. Jen, you are a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Right. Yeah. No, I'll do it. Thank you. Okay, so. Are there any others we need right away? I don't think we we don't really need any of the others right away. That um, the, in the tech vote, the voting member of tech comes up later in the agenda again. So that's okay. And actually, as does the ESBC, we have to vote that officially separate from that. But this is this was just to get a start out, and um, the other ones we can come back to if people are not feeling so inclined at this point to jump on them. Many of these are a little bit quieter in the summer. Mm -hmm. as well. So that gives a slight advantage there to think about it. So if we are ready to move on from the liaison reports, I would like to go into the acting superintendent's report. Okay, so some of these things have already been mentioned this evening, um, but we have had the senior boat cruise. The seniors returned to center school and made a fabulous visit there. I think that it was just as valuable for the center school kids as it was for the seniors. Uh, we had senior night last Thursday and graduation on Friday. Marathon Elementary, we have the ribbon cutting on Saturday and on 614, so June 14th, we have Flag Day at Center School, and it will be ceremoniously the last Flag Day. So, yeah. That is, that is something. It's a long standing tradition at Center. Flag Day is amazing. So, in terms of the school committee chair report, I am going to. Um, add the caveat that it actually was not me, it was actually the school committee chair at the time, which was Jean approved for payment. The accounts payable warrants of 18-075, 18-076, 18-077, And all the warrants are included, uh, not actually in the packet, but in the warrants. Um, then additionally, the uh, chair approved for payment payroll warrant S18024. That um, will move into the school physician's contract. Okay. So every year the school has to have a physician. We have Dr. Boder, and 
I believe that this year the dollar amount was somewhere in the low 6,000s with a 2% increase, which is what I am recommending. Um, that would take her annual salary let next year not to quite $7,000. Um, so I am requesting and recommending that the school committee vote to approve the school physician's contract for 2018-19 uh, with an increase of 2%. So moved. Second. Okay, so we have a motion, and, and motion by Jen. Yes. Second by Meg. All those in favor? Yes. 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 So moved. I have to flip back to... Okay, so the next item we have is the school committee meeting dates, which actually does not require a motion. Uh, we're actually better off without a motion, because otherwise if we need to change because of a snow day or we need an additional meeting because we're behind on something, we'd have to re-bring it back here. Okay, so I'm going to give you those calendars. Discuss if people have conflicts. And there are three pages in that little packet. The first one will show you that when you get to May, and I think this is one that we have looked at before. Um, the 25th of April and the 2nd of May would put us with back-to-back -back meetings. And so I'm not sure if that's advantageous. Um, so we may want to look again at May and think maybe about doing something more like the 9th and the 30th or the 16th and the 13th or something along those lines because we have that whole week of the 20, 21st, 22nd, which would be town meeting. The election probably. So, the, yeah. yeah, so. Do we need to have the 30th? If we I don't, I don't, I think, I think, let's, I think Ross get rid of the 30th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Just because that's a busy week with right. school yeah, concerts and yeah. everything, yeah. everything coming yeah. up. And so second and, and 16 remains. And leave the sec. I would say leave the second and the sixteenth. Okay. Um, and then I, I, I don't think it's a problem to meet the twenty fifth. And then, do you think that's a? It, it could give us a chance to get ahead on some stuff. If anything. In on May? the twenty fourth, you mean? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. On the twenty third. I'm May? sorry. I'm on April. That's why I'm okay. skipping the twenty. I, because <laughs> the twenty third is going to push us into. Um, Memorial, is that? Yeah, I'm just Memorial thinking Day weekend. Weekend. It doesn't really the 23rd matter. could be a lot if you have town meeting that would run on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Sorry, I think town meeting is the first Monday. Yeah, it, it is. It's oh, the, oh, the town sorry. meeting is the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th, I would oh, guess. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. But it is a lot of meeting nights. Yeah. It is, so, but so if we do the 2nd and the 16th, we're not touching that, and then we can sort mm -hmm. of stay away from the concerts and um, Memorial Day weekend would be my okay. preference in end of the year busyness. Leave the 30th or eliminate the 30th? I would eliminate the 30th just because that time of year is so busy with all the concerts. That is true. Can I make um, one suggestion, though? Yes. Um, if town, if uh, town meeting is that first week in May, mm -hmm. um, if we... Um, and then, you know, we will come right back and have the meeting right away the next week. It's fine with me, but we may want to consider keeping the 30th until after the election so that at right as soon as folks are elected onto school committee, we have a meeting sort of immediately thereafter because I feel like going three weeks without a chair was a little sticky, mm -hmm. you know, so it might yeah. make sense to just have a meeting direct immediately after and, and maybe eliminating the 16th. Because it's right after town meeting, budget is passed, maybe things are chill for three days, two days, a day. But, you know, just something to consider anyway. I like the idea of keeping the 30th. Okay. So get rid of then, are we getting rid of the 16th then? Or getting rid of the second? Uh, probably get rid of the, the second, sixth. yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? Get rid of the second? Do you think we'll need it to prepare for town meeting? Well, we typically we have we can do mm -hmm. we can schedule to meet, meet before, before. Okay. town okay. meeting. Okay. So that was eliminate the second. Yeah. Okay. So 
So we'd have the 25th of April, the 16th of May, the 30th of May, and the 13th of June. Yeah. Yes. So we're keeping everything okay. as is, right? Everything except the 2nd and the 30th. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's everything except the 2nd. Yeah. So we're getting rid of 2nd? We're yeah. getting yeah. rid of 2nd. Okay. 2nd of May. Right. Right. So I think that's, and then what do we want to look at on the next page here? So the next page is one that was blank in case you put oh. a million marks on that <laughs> sheet of paper, which I know I have done. <laughs> so we'll just add in 16, 30, and keep 13. Mm -hmm. that work, will those work with um, Jen Parsons' schedule as well? Uh, she is waiting for this schedule to be done, and then I will give this to her, and she can check with her school committee in okay. Milford. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think that's good. All right. So that's great. A whole lot faster than I anticipated. And then we're up to the tech voting member participant. Okay, so we do have to have one school committee member who would be a member of tech and be the mo voting member on their board of directors. Uh, so I am simply requesting and recommending that you vote to appoint whoever it is that would like to have that, that role on this board um, as our voting member. And then you are the non-voting member, typically, is that usually the superintendent? Yes. Is that, so and that's your... What will happen um, at my level is there is a superintendent's job alike group, there's an assistant superintendent job alike group, and then I will take advantage of a lot of the professional development that Mina was just talking about. Everything from, you know, concussions to, you know, technology assisted learning and they just do a whole host yes. of things that you know it's They're amazing, amazing. I, I feel like we need to open that up more like the Highlander Institute's leadership program mm -hmm. last year or even um, you know some of the collaboration around technology and uh, data privacy that they had done mm -hmm. um, so I was just wondering Dr. Kavanaugh that last year it was my first meeting on the school committee and Dr. Uh, McLeod had shifted that role to you to be the liaison and because the assistant superintendent could not be the voting member mm -hmm. the voting was shifted to the school committee back to you um, and so I'm just wondering I mean th what that role entails obviously is to also look at the financial reports that come in from tech it's a great group of people um, so that's some of the work similar to being on the board here it requires review of that and I'm wondering if you have any interest in being the voting member just throwing it out there. I would, I would not mind being the voting member, but when we also belong to a second collaborative, we belong to the accept collaborative. And um, the superintendent of any district who is part of that collaborative has to be the voting member. So I'm on the board of directors that accept. I so I just fear that sometimes those meetings are both on Fridays, for example. So I would be at the board of directors meeting at accept in the morning and tech in the afternoon, or it's, sometimes there could be conflict. So I think I would actually prefer that someone from the committee keeps that unless you would prefer that I do it. Sure. I don't mind no, doing I, it. I, I just I worry about conflict. So. Sure. Um, you know, I know there's, there's a lot of interest in tech. So, I'm willing to let one of I mean, I have a lot of interest in many of them, so it's fine if one of you would prefer. Uh, I, I would wouldn't mind know. staying, but we can have two people. Yes, I, I won't be able to make all the Friday morning meetings because I teach Friday mornings. So, but th there's no reason why you couldn't go along when you're okay. free, though, yep, as absolutely. well. Like that's so, you'll be the voting member, and I'll. Okay. I tagged along my first year for a couple of meetings that didn't go to the. Okay. I couldn't make the full commitment either. Right. So. Okay, yeah. super. Can I just ask a question about the tech programs? We're a member district, mm -hmm. we're one of the member districts. Are the programs open to anyone or only committee members? So, if, if we have certain people who are designated as our liaison members, can other people in the district attend? Yes, other people could. So for example, when we went to the professional development on concussions, you really could have brought anyone from your district who might be interested in that. So when Mina and I attended that, we brought D. King, the athletic director, with us for that particular. What about uh, parents? Do par are parents open to going to those? Oh. I don't see why they wouldn't be. I, I don't, I'm not sure of the answer to that. Uh, they did one on, you know, sort of race diversity and culture, and so the, 
and Ben Menick and Josh Hanna as two assistant principals in the high school and middle school attended with me. So there are, are lots of things, and when we find something that's relevant, I know Ashok and Crystal Ho will very frequently go to different things that are technology driven. Right. I think what I have seen, at least, Amanda, and, and I think that's a very good question to ask, that how open is it? What I have found is that there are groups that they're focusing. The meeting rooms are a certain size. Uh, but it looks like, for instance, the technology one is very focused on technology, and I, I didn't even know about it, just as. Uh, so I think they're focused on the, you know, they want to kind of have an idea of who the participants are to make that richer. But I think we should ask that question, oh. that can it be open to the public? Or maybe there are certain events that are open to the public. I don't That's know. Right. I haven't, That's right. I haven't That's connected right. with them except through the internship program, which I know is phenomenal. But um, I know they do a lot of things. I think they have online courses, all sorts of other services. So. Yeah, so I think the only drawback for tech is that it's in Walpole. I mean, it, it, that has been something that kind of, you know, the distance, I think, will occasionally be. But other than that, that what they do is amazing. Yeah, we've enjoyed a couple of rides together. And, you know, it's going to be open, and we've been pretty good about sharing whenever those meetings happen with the group. Um, so hopefully we can carpool. So, Mina, you're interested in hanging on to the tech role as the voting member. All right. So then I would request and recommend that the school committee vote to appoint Mina as the voting member of the Tech Collaborative for Hopkinton for the 2018-19 school year. So moved. Second. Meg. So, so Amanda with the motion, Meg with the second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Okay. Unanimous and so carries. Then we have to officially vote the ESBC voting member participant. I don't know if you want to say anything no, about no. what we already said. No, I think that, that we've done a good job with that. Um, okay. Are you sticking yeah. around there, Jen? As long would as that as be your hope? okay with that? Yeah, I'm yep. happy to stick around. Yes. Okay. Then in that case, I would seek a motion to appoint Jen as the voting member for ESBC for the 2018-19 school year. So moved. Second. Oh, and so... Motion by Mina, second by Meg. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Unanimous and so carries. Uh, and that brings us down to, oh, and then we don't need a separate motion, but Meg, you had said you would like to be the second person with ESBC, is that correct? Yes. Just to keep that yes. in mind together. So the next piece is the class gift, Dr. All right. So this year's class gift, the class of 2018, has given to Hopkinton High School uh, some lovely comfy furniture for the guidance suite because that's a place where kids tend to hang out and it's always pretty amazing if you are in this building even at four o'clock in the afternoon there will still be kids sitting in that guidance suite doing homework together just it, it's a wonderful thing uh, and the second thing that they have um, offered to the building is a water bottle refilling station so those are the two gifts and just by way of formality we need to approve these gifts from the class of 2018. So I would seek a motion to approve the gifts from the class of 2018. So moved. Second. Motion by Mina, second by Meg. All those in favor? Yes. yes. And I'm a yes, so that's unanimous as well. And Nancy, I, I don't know if this is allowed to go back um, to a little bit on the liaison. I think there was some conversation that we had um, around possibly initiating a committee on diversity, perhaps. Is that something we should take, you know, take up at the next meeting? Um, how would we want to proceed about that? So I, th I think probably the best thing would be if we just kind of put it out as a separate okay. agenda item, okay. and we figured out what it is that we would like roles and response. We can all think okay. about it in the meantime, and then bring it back to the meeting in two weeks. I think that's an excellent, excellent idea. And I would also jump in and say that. In this coming school year, because we're in the last year of our strategic plan as a district, we're going to have to create a new strategic plan. And I think that that whole diversity and culture piece probably needs to be a part of the strategic planning. So I, I, mean, I wouldn't discourage there being a liaison, but I think that part of um, this group is going to have to be looking at that as we create a strategic plan, obviously with the input of all kinds of stakeholders, people in the community, teachers, administrators, you know, parents, uh, kids. So 
that's just a very important piece, I think, of the work ahead of us. Sure. And we can talk about this, but uh, I'm sorry I should no, have brought okay. up when we went towards the liaisons. That's uh, okay. Roles. So then next we have the request to extend year end uh, balances. Uh, thank you. So one of the school committee policies in order to close the year um, in the timing of meetings and everything else is to authorize the director of finance to take any monies that are left that are unspent within the budget and prepay something. Um, what we've been doing is prepaying our um, special education transportation assessment um, for the fiscal year 19. So is this, uh, do we know what, what that number is looking like? We will have money left. Um, <coughs> we're working on it weekly, uh, trying to get in invoices as fast as, can, as we can. Um, but we will, we will have money that we'll be able to prepay. So, Don't and not. most of that is, um, you know, we did do a budget freeze, as you know, in, in January. Um, so we'll have a little bit of expenses that are left, but the majority of the money that will be unexpended is actually going to be in the salary side. So. Okay, well, that, that is a relief that we have come out from being, yes. um, for a while we were um, having a budget deficit, so it is a relief to have come to the other side of that. Um, yeah. I mean, there are, there are still some expenditures that we are definitely um, still estimating. Um, you know, so those hopefully will become clearer in the next couple of weeks. But that's why, again, the timing in order to close the books uh, in a timely basis is to uh, give me the authorization to do that. Okay. I don't know if anyone had any questions. No, it makes perfect sense. Okay. Uh, if there are no questions, then I guess we. Um, are looking for a motion to authorize the expenditures of year-end balances to prepay FY19 except collaborative special education transportation. So moved. Second. So yeah, motion by Mina, second by Jen. All those in favor? Yes. 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 So there we go. And that brings us up to our next opportunity for public comment. <laughs> Um, I'm Sonia Fairbanks Harris, and first of all, thanks to all of you for your commitment to our children's education. I'm a parent of two children in the Hopkinton schools, and um, with um, the movement towards like more, it just feels like this is a time for a movement towards more public engagement and transparency in schools. And um, to that end, I was wondering if you all might consider a couple things that I've thought about. And one of them is that I know I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but there are times when <laughs> you are, you know, I'm watching a meeting and I don't actually know exactly what's being discussed. And as a person of the public, it might be really great if there was any way for you know a light to appear or some way for somebody to ask for a clarification in the moment because Good. public comment can only come and then if you want to bring a subject back around it you know it might be an old subject by then so just a little bit more back and forth if there's any possibility for that i recognize that there might be standards that that can't be accommodated um but the other thing is that I would like to request that you consider maybe some part of the Huffington Public Schools website that starts documenting standards <laughs> so that I just talked to so many parents and sometimes it, it's you know it's even must be a lot worse for people who are like second you know English language speakers to navigate the system mm -hmm. um, and figure out, like I have this lovely woman out of district who, you know, works on my hair, but she, she basically was asking me, like, well, what do I do? Like, I think my child has um, 
you know, learning disability, and nobody, she didn't know, like, it's very difficult to find out what does one do, mm -hmm. what are the standards, what was, does one do, what's the next thing one does, and that's not listed anywhere, and I feel like in a way to gain more trust in, and gender, like a, yeah. a more back and forth, would be to have a location where these things are um, uh, defined, um, even down to, you know, how is a committee formed? I mean, all these things are things that a lot of people don't know, I don't, you know, and want to find out, and want to learn, and want to be, and I think um, one of the things that I think that it would help with is even just in engendering a sense of trust in the schools, because I think that if people communicate on social media, they may, you know, see discrepancies in the way something was handled, and if there's nothing, there's no documented, committed standard to refer back to and say, well, you know, it was handled correctly because here's what it says, it can engender a sense of distrust in the system, whether that's warranted or not. So um, I would, um, I think a lot of people really appreciate that. Um, I've talked to a few people who, who agreed. Um, I also think more importantly, I think it would actually increase engagement and volunteerism and collaboration. So thanks for your consideration. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. So, and, and great points. I also just want to add, even though we don't typically bring it up, but the website is something that is um, already under review. So hopefully there will be some real movement on that. But thank you so much for bringing that all here tonight. So it, that moves us to items by consensus. Okay. So the acting superintendent recommends that the school committee move to approve the items by consensus as outlined below. Okay. So unless there's anything people want to pull out, we vote this as a block. If, you, if there's any item of discussion people want to have. Okay. Hearing none, I will seek a motion to... Um, so moved. Second. So motion by Meg, second by Amanda. All those in favor? Yes. yes. And I'm a yes. So that passes. And then finally, I uh, seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. A little fast second. on that. Nina <laughs> <laughs> anyway. with the motion, Meg with the second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. All right. Thank you. We are adjourned for tonight. Our next meeting. Regular meeting of the school committee will take place on June 21st, 2018. Uh, it says here at the high school library, but I believe we're actually going to be meeting at HCAM Studios. Because of the carnival? Because of the carnival going on. I think that's what I saw on the... Uh, Don't want to compete with the carnival? There won't be any parking. <laughs> so, to be t determined. Thank you very much, and have a good night. Good night.